Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad that uh, we're having a discussion about the integrity of our elections and uh, as being fundamental to our democracy. And Mr. Krebs, as I look at this chart, even if it's stated, um, your responsibility at DHS is, is to protect critical infrastructure, and you did say that uh, election systems, critical infrastructure. And you have an election security task force, so do you consider DHS to be the lead agency on making sure that our election systems uh, are not hacked? Ma'am, we, we do have unique statutory authorities uh, to coordinate protection activities across the critical infrastructure and as a designated critical infrastructure subsector, yes, ma'am. I have lead in coordinating. Now, I do, I do not physically protect those networks. I enable state and locals and also the private yes. sector to have better practices. Yes, ma'am. I understand that, but, but you would be the lead federal agency that would have this responsibility to work with the state and local entities to protect our election systems. From a critical infrastructure protection perspective, yes, yes ma'am, alongside the FBI as well as the intelligence community. Well, we're just looking for, as we're wrestling with the, the idea of, you know, who's responsible for what, I'd just like to get down that with regard to election systems, we should look to DHS. That's all I want to know. Now, I hope that your task force is also addressing the purchases of uh, political ads by foreign countries. I hope that's one of the things that, that uh, your task force will um, address and whether there's a need for legislation to uh, prevent that kind of, those kind of purchases. I want to get to a question to uh, Mr. Rapuano. Data protection is obviously an important issue with industrial espionage being carried out by some of our near peer competitors. And the DOD requires contractors to provide adequate security for covered defense information that is processed, stored, or transmitted on the contractor's internal information system or network. By December 31st, 2017, contractors must, at a minimum, implement security requirements to meet National Institute of Standards and Technology Standards, NIST. So my question, Mr. Rapaona, can you talk about the importance of having industry comply with this requirement and how you are working with industry to get the word out so that everyone is aware, especially I would say small businesses that uh, you all work with. They need to know that they're supposed to be doing this. Yes, Senator. Our, our primary focus is with the defense industrial base uh, where we have the highest frequency and uh, most significant DOD programs. Uh, but we are engaged with all of those private sector elements that work with the Department of Defense uh, I, I work that closely with the Chief Information Officer for the Department, Dr. Zangardi. Uh, I can get you additional details on the processes for, for doing that. Uh, and yes, I'd like to make sure that, uh, as, as I mentioned, particularly small businesses who may not be aware of this requirement, that they are um, very aware and that they, can, they have enough time to comply because uh, December 2017th is right around the corner. So whatever you have, flyers, whatever you use to get the word out. For Mr. Krebs, you mentioned in your testimony how cyber actors have strate strategically targeted critical infrastructure sectors with the intent to ranging from cyber es espionage to disruption of critical services. And specifically, you identified two malware attacks called Black Energy and Havex. Is that the right pronunciation, yes, ma uh, specifically targeted industrial control systems. And it doesn't take a while imagination to think up how a sophisticated cyber attack to a power plant's industrial con control system could cause a massive disruption with grave consequences. What is being done by DHS to encourage the private sector to harden their defense of uh, industrial control systems? Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you for your question, and I, I do share your concern, uh, particularly with respect to those two uh, uh, toolkits. I think I would have, I'd answer the question two ways. One, uh, in in-point protection. So we do work very closely with the electricity sector, as I mentioned early on, with the Electricity Sector Coordinating Council and those uh, that, uh, again, from a grid perspective. But then through our industrial control system CERT, the ICS CERT, mm -hmm. we do look at kind of more scalable solutions that I mentioned in my opening statement. Not just kind of the whack-a-mole approach uh, at the individual facilities, but try to understand what the actual individual control systems are, who manufactures them, because it does tend to be a smaller set of companies instead of 100 or 1,000 
uh, endpoints. We can kind of go to the root of the problem, the systemic problem, as I also mentioned, address that at the manufacturer or coder level, and then from there kind of break out and hit those endpoints. So again, we do work at the endpoint, but we also work at kind of the root problem. So you perform outreach activities then through ICS CERT to, to make sure that, uh, for example, the, the uh, utilities sector is adequately? Uh, among other mechanisms, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.